tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software, $100, and starting pricing for high-end software, $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyer's protection guarantee. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Beta now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Boom. All right, what's going on, man? I'm here. What's going on with it? How's the family doing? How are you guys doing, ladies and gentlemen? Glad to have you in here, ladies and gentlemen. How is everybody doing today? All right. Glad to have y'all in here. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. Waiting on everybody to get on in. Waiting on everybody to get on in. Now, listen, listen. We won't be on too, too long today because I got a lot of stuff to do, but I do want to chop it up with the family. Got on my Florida Evans shirt. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. <laughs> Shout out to our Bahamian sister, Esther Roll from Good Times. You know, Esther Roll was Bahamian. She wasn't FBA, but we still loved Esther Roll. All right. So we're here. How's everybody doing, man? Let me look in this chat room and see how the family is doing. Um, everybody, let people know that we're live right now. Let everybody know that we're live. Everybody, give me a nice retweet. Give me a retweet, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a retweet. Let everybody know that we're live right here and we're chopping up some good game on today's broadcast. Give me a nice retweet, family and repost this on your Facebook. Let's do that as well, all right? So, a few things we gotta talk about today. A few things we gotta talk about. Um, first thing, there was um, like a little meeting out there in Washington, D.C. It was an organization called um, the Root Institute. What is this in my hair? Something white in my hair. What the hell is this in my hair, guys? Some damn lint in my hair it's bothering me in my robust FBA hairline. Um, but yeah, they had something called the Root Institute. Is that connected to the Root publication? It sounds like it's connected to the Root publication, but they had something that they didn't put together called the Root Institute, and they went out there to Howard University. And it was basically Tether Palooza. They were going to have all of these Democratic shills act as spokespersons for Foundation of Black Americans. And some of the FBA family went up there and just kind of let them know what the business was. So when you look at the list of people they, they were going to have up there, oh, it was a who's who's list of tethers, Democratic shills, flunkies, people who are hell-bent on undermining us, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just, I saw that with the president of Ghana, they want reparations for slavery now. And remember, it was, the, the, the tethers were telling us, they were trying to clown us, stop begging the white man, nigga. You're never going to get it. You know, they were doing all that stuff. Now that we've stood on our square, it's, what about us now? We need it too. But, like I said, they had this little Root Institute thing out there in D.C., where basically it was going to be a, 
a, a, a get out to vote campaign. They were going to try to use little code words and um, trick bag words to try to get us into voting for the damn Democrats. That's all it is without them actually doing anything. And you say the African-American parade day in New York was a joke. What was that about? Are we going to have to have a, a real FBA parade somewhere to really, really get it popping? Yeah, because I heard they had some little African-American. OK, I don't know what it was, what that was about. But anyway, we'll get on that later. So look. So out there in D.C., let me play a clip of some sisters. They went and crashed that little shindig that they had. They went up there and shut it down. They let them know, hey, you guys are not going to be out here trying to represent us and y'all ain't talking about no tangibles. So let me, play, about let me play this. Hold on one second. Now, this was... um. This is this Negro here is one of these um, DNC cats. Hold on, hold on. And the sister in the audience, you know, let them know, hey, what's up? What's going on with some tangibles? We have other problems. You're asking us for our vote. We need an anti-black crime bill. We have just witnessed in Jacksonville a white supremacist uh, shoot down three people for the sake just simply because they were black. Subsequent to that, there was another thwarted attempt at a church Right? That was thankfully thwarted where they wanted to kill black people in a church. There was, this is literally our life in our world. Within the past 30 days, then up in the Cape, up in at Massachusetts, we got young white supremacists sitting up there trying to drown a teenage black boy in a pond and yelling George Floyd. So we have a real problem. The DNC needs to give us an anti black criminal bill. Yep. It's, it's extremely serious. Let's let's reel it back. Let's take it back to Buffalo. All oh, oh, everybody's oh, being oh, shot oh, in Buffalo. Oh, no, hold on. Oh, in, oh, in, oh, in Buffalo, oh, we died. We died oh, in Buffalo, oh, but we got an anti-Semitism oh, bill. What is the DNC oh, doing about anti-blackness in this country? What are you talking about? No, I don't think it's there. What are you talking about? We need to do something about lineage-based reparations. We don't see it. Joe Biden said that he had our back. But what we're seeing is that he's stabbing us in the back. Boom. Come on, sister. Mm. Boy, that sister gave him that work. And look how they tried to cut her off. Shout out to that sister. She went up there and gave them all the work. And then another sister came through and got on their backs. Them sisters were giving them that work. Boy, they don't know what to do about that. See, hold on, hold on, here's another sister. Hold on, here's another sister came through. Hold on. The sisters were going in on them. Hold on. But only offer, uh, only talk to black people about voting. And that's what you're doing up in here today. Pandering for vote to all of these students up in here. You're sitting on your hand, literally. And then you're going to be disrespectful and walk off the stage. But you want our vote. Look, wait, wait, wait. Look at the dude right here. That's, um, look, you see that dude right there with that janky hairline? That's, um, 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 David, what's his, um, David John. Remember him? Um, um, from the Black something, the Black Justice League or something, which is a, a, a low-key LGBT organization. Y'all remember him? They got all of the shills and the, the Trojan horse people all in there. Shout out to them sisters for calling him out. I didn't even catch that until now. I just noticed his face in there. That's that David John dude. Remember, he was on The Breakfast Club. Remember that? Up there with Malik Yoba. They got a, an organization, and they'll use the word black, but it's really a low-key LGBT organization. Remember, he was on The Breakfast Club talking about... Um, transgender this and transgender that and people were like well damn you know what what's a woman you know y'all stop y'all be worried about people dicks why y'all so worried about people damn dicks it y'all stop where it ain't about the dick it's about the spirit of the person all y'all do y'all care about dick dicks don't mean nothing that's because somebody got a little damn dick that don't mean a little dick don't mean nothing it's the spirit 
that dude telling us if a woman has a penis, don't even trip. Yeah, that's a that's a deal breaker. Shout out to them sisters, by the way. Shout out to those sisters, by the way, putting in some work, and I love it. I love that it was some sisters who went up in there because they try to play the gender divide with sisters. They'll try to get sisters and tell them, well, y'all different than those guys. Y'all different. Thankfully, we have a lot of sisters, especially FBA sisters, who are not going for the okie doke. Our FBA sisters know that that's a con game and they're calling them out and they can't say nothing. They can't start saying, well, y'all women are misogynistic. They can't do that. They damn sure can't do that. So shout out to those sisters. We need more sisters like that to call them out. Because see, when we call out the Biden administration and Kamala, uh, when, when us black men, well, y'all niggas, y'all just don't like Kamala Harris. Y'all homophobic and y'all y'all xenophobic against Kamala Harris. You know, when we say, hey, we don't want all of these weird policies being tied in with us. Y'all just hate Kamala Harris and her black girl magic. See, they try to run that game on us. See, they can't run that on them sisters. They had to, they had to run off the stage when the sisters came through on that ass. They had to run. You know? They hightailed it the hell out of there. Again, shout out to those sisters. Very powerful. Much respect to them. But yes, family, the sisters were absolutely right. We got to have an anti-black crime bill by name. An anti-black crime bill. Because, see, they play this game like Roland and those guys. There is the anti-black crime bill. It's, it's, it's mixed in with the crime bill, the anti-racism, the civil rights crime bill, 1968. No. We need something very specific to us, just like Asians got some specific language in there for them. The Asian community, they didn't get put under the catch-all umbrella of the civil rights protection law. They made some policy changes specifically with them by name. And let me tell you something. They don't want to do that with us because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you get a crime bill and you use the right language in it, and you say, hey, there's a crime bill against anti-black racism, all right? All we need to do is have the wording in there. And they know it will be a problem. You know why? Because some people say, well, law enforcement, they won't honor it. It doesn't matter. If they have a crime bill with the words anti-black in it and saying, hey, doing this to a black person, this is not legal. We will enforce it. You understand what I'm saying? This is what they know. If they have an anti-black crime bill with the words in there that's correct, anti-black crime, I'm going to enforce that. Do you feel where I'm coming from? I'm going to enforce that. So now they understand with the, an anti-black crime bill, with the language correct, if a white supremacist tries to pull some of their little shenanigans and we have to put the people's chair on them or put the people's elbow on them, we can say, hey, we go to court. We're just enforcing the anti-black crime bill. That person as per this bill, was committing a crime against me. So here is my legal justification for protecting myself. You see? That's why they're real funny style about having the language in there. We're going to enforce it. Don't worry about who's going to enforce it. We'll enforce it. Here, the problem is, every time we try to defend ourselves, we end up getting caught up. Just like our brother Ozone down there in Florida now. This brother's at home minding his business trying to walk to his, his apartment and his family. A race soldier pop out of the dark out of nowhere, tries to ambush him. The brother defends himself. Now he's on, on trial. You did? And so many other situations where white supremacists try to run up on us and then we have to defend ourselves and then we end up getting caught up. So now we got the language right and we have an anti-black crime bill and somebody tries to run up on us, yelling nigga this and nigga that, and then we start putting the people's elbow on them, boom, we got right here. As you see, as per this anti-black crime bill law, what he was doing was illegal, so I, by the law, I had to defend myself based on this law. 
That's why they're so, they're trying to do us in the little catch-all thing. No, no, no. We don't need a catch-all. We need specific language in there for us. And we'll enforce it. Yeah? But family, you know, it's election season. And right now, they know that we're delineating. And they're trying to run from it. And we're not letting them run from it. And if you notice, there's a lot of anti-FBA hit pieces in the media right now. With that scamming um, Somali brick girl, the girl who, who people said lied and said she got hit with a brick, there are some tethers in the media wrote an article trying to defend her, trying to throw us under the bus while defending this person who's basically a, uh, an alleged scammer. And this woman has, and we done talked about the whole Somali woman with the brick and her getting beat up every couple of years and then putting up a GoFundMe page, making some money off getting beat up every couple of years. So now that there's a pushback against her and all of her shenanigans had nothing to do with Foundation of Black Americans. So NBC, they got some of their tethers to write this story. Brickgate revives an age old argument between black men and women. Okay, now they're this black men. This ain't got nothing to do with Foundation of Black Americans. Nothing. In an exclusive interview, the woman at the center of Brickgate says she suffered daily panic attacks as a result of the familiar backlash hurled at black women when they publicly denounce harm from black men. This is trash. This woman is not believable. And these are tethers who wrote this article trying to go along with her, her, her janky program. So I'm going to skip past a lot of stuff. With the lack of clarity that went down, women and men alike called Brickgate a hoax, comparing Osmond to Carly Russell, a black woman who was charged with two misdemeanors for faking her own kidnapping. In an exclusive interview for the first time since the attack, Osmond, the, the, the alleged scamming woman, says that she suffers daily panic attacks and nightmares as a result of the online vitriol. She's a perpetual victim. She's a perpetual victim. Let me see. Um... Now look at this. NBC News reviewed a police report filed on September 3rd in hospital records with results from a physical exam. Records indicate her left ear had blood coming out of the canal and the left side of her face was swollen with bruising and tenderness. If you got hit with a brick, you're going to have more than some tenderness. All right. That woman was up in the club wearing a damn mask and then she took the mask off and boom, there's a big old knot. Yeah, we're calling cap. All right. Decades of strife. Examples of this dynamic are pervasive. Rapper Tory Lane was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting rapper Megan The Stallion. Throughout the trial, online agitators repeatedly accused Stallion of lying trying to ruin the career of a successful black man. Okay, Tory Lanez is not FBA, all right? Don't put all, they keep trying to put all of this stuff under FBA, put it up under us, under Foundation of Black America. Now look at this tether woman here. Now we've talked about her before, this is her tweet. Black men pulling stuff from a black woman's social media, they claim show she didn't deserve protection when a black man smashed her face with a brick for not giving her him her number okay this is another woman ain't this this woman this uji anaya was that the woman who because there's so many of these tethers family in the room help me out is uja the woman who was calling us akatas hold on one second one second uji anaya hold on one second that name just rung a bell. There's so many of these tethers. Hold on. Is that the woman who was calling us some damn Akatas? Hold on one second. Because that name, I think that's that woman who was like a professor somewhere at a school. Was that the one? Oh, I'm trying to wait. That, that's her, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was the one. Where, da, 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 da. The chief monarch of a thing. Where, da, 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 da. And I think she got rid of her social media. 
Hold on, wait, I'm looking her up real quick. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was calling us Akatas at one point. I think she probably deleted it. But yeah, she was a professor somewhere and she was talking real greasy about us. Oh man, I'm trying to find the tweets. I think she deleted a lot of her tweets. Oh man. Hold on, I'm trying to find some of her tweets because I think she deleted them. Hold on one second. Damn it, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all bear with me. I'm, ah, I can't find this shit. Okay. Okay, but I think that's the one who was kind of referring to us as Akatas. All right? And she got reprimanded at the school that she works at, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can't find the tweets now. But yeah, the women who wrote this article, these are some fellow tethers. They're talking about the damn color purple and, um, hold on, animosity fed by trauma. Okay, these people are trying to analyze us and they're trying to put this whole violence persona on us. They're talking about some generational tra trauma and, and well, what is this? Hold on, I'm, I'm just looking through this stuff. Um, during post-slavery era, black families were founded upon heteronormative patriarchal structures. Many black people went on a desperate search to find their family. When black units were confronted with constant disruption, marriage was used as a way to strengthen these. When black people began to internalize and emulate white Western understandings of patriarchy, Y'all can go to hell. This ain't look, look. This story ain't got nothing to do with no slavery. It has nothing to do with foundational Black Americans. Look at how they're tying this this Somali scammer at a club full of tethers where we weren't even on, no FBAs were even around. We have nothing to do with this story, yet you have tether writers trying to tie in slavery, well, the slave trauma and leaving the plantation. These are all tethers trying to put us in the mix. They're so desperate to put us in the mix and prop us up in a story we have not a damn thing to do with. You did? This is why we delineate, yeah, that heteronormative, that's that LGBT talk. And the writers of this article, hold on, these are the writers, all right, right here. These are the writers. You, you see the cake soap and the, the, the $5 divestment wigs, all right? But family, there's this thing, man, where the white media is helping these tethers denigrate us and our lineage. The white media is now helping these tethers denigrate us and denigrate our media. There was another article that came out, the New York Times today. Now, family, this is a doozy. But when I tell you these people are trying to prop up the tether class to be their overseer class. So now, check this article out. This came out with the LA Times because they see we're now checking people for trying to throw us under the bus. Hold on, hold on one second. No, no, hold on one second, okay. They see now that we are trying to, oh yeah, 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 shout out to Connie Collins. Yeah, that uh, that Uju Anaya was calling us Akatas and then she tried to explain, hold on, let me see something. Hold on, let me show y'all something. She tried to explain why she was calling us Akatas. Let me find that on Google real quick. Let me find that on Google real quick. Hold on, bear with me one second, guys. Uh, okay, I, I, I'll get on it later because I got so much other stuff to cover. So LA Times, man, they came out with this article. And check this out. Look at this. All right. Black immigrants face more discrimination in the U.S. The source is sometimes surprising. So now they're saying that black immigrants from Africa and the Caribbean, yeah, they face discrimination, but from who? And you go down here and read, all right? 
we go over the whole, this is such and such. She's picking up some yams and it's a staple in black American kitchens. And she's from Jamaica. They're talking about this Jamaican lady. She marvels at the way enslaved Africans, her ancestors and the forebearers, black Americans sustain themselves. Black people be there in America or the uh, Jamaica carry themselves with perseverance over adversity. Ah, yeah, yeah. And yet here it goes. It feels to her though some black Americans look down on black newcomers and resent them for taking opportunities they fought so long to get. You know the people who tell me to go back to my country the most is black people, not white people. Uh-oh. This is a whole hit piece against us, guys. This is a hit piece against FBA freedmen, descendants of slaves. This is a hit, this is a hit piece. This is tether babble. White mommy and white daddy propped them up. The real racist is not white mommy and white daddy. It's these niggas. Cap. Stop it. Let me read the rest. This is all cap. Her experience reflects a widespread reality among black immigrants who ranks swelled just over 2 million in 2000 to nearly 5 million today. All right. Da 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 da. Uh, da 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 da. Let me go down. Da da da. Those from Africa or the Caribbean experience a double burden of discrimination in the U.S., both as immigrants and as black residents in a country with a long history of racism. Black immigrants, for example, are more likely to report workplace discrimination and unfair treatment by the police. No, not really, no. No, they're not. No, that's not true. That they're more, more likely to report workplace discrimination? No, because a lot of them come over here and be working under the table. A lot of them come over here and work these little jobs for, for low wages, and they don't rock the boat. They don't really say anything. I don't know where they got that from. That's not true. Some of these immigrants come over here and work under the table, and they're not going to rock the boat. They don't be saying nothing. They'd be happy to get these little janky little jobs like that. And also this whole thing about us being resentful to them for taking jobs. thats I've been telling y'all, that's a tether lie that they love to spread. That's a major tether lie. What jobs are you taking from us that we're just so mad about? They can never explain what these jobs are. What are these jobs that you're taking from us that we so, we're just so disgruntled about? Stop it. That's all cap. They never tell us what these jobs are because it's damn sure not them Uber jobs and them Postmate jobs that y'all got. We ain't tripping on that. Let me read the rest of it. All right? Hold on. Y'all bear with me. All right. About a third of... Immigrants overall say they've been told to go back where they came from. And that figure jumps to nearly half for the black immigrants. Pendergrass, the, the Jamaican lady, she says, those words are especially aggravating when they're spoken by citizens of her own race. Oh, there's this great divide. Oh, you're from the islands. During two separate focus groups this summer with immigrants from the Caribbean and Sub-Saharan Africa, several said they too have been dismayed to find that black Americans treat them more harshly. As a result, they avoid associating with that community. Go to hell, you lying bastards. You lying ass bastards. Y'all sit over there in your homeland and y'all plot and plan to say, when we go over there, hey, when you go over there, stay away from the Akatas. Y'all say that over there. 
They're trying to make it seem like they come over here and we just treat them so bad. Oh no, we're going to have to force, we're forced to be by ourselves. We're forced to go over here because you FBA niggas are so mean. So we got to go over here to, to protect ourselves. No, y'all come over here with that damn attitude. You sit over there in the Caribbean and in Africa saying, when you go there, Get all the resources you can. Stay away from those Abids. Stay away from the Jareers. Stay away from the Akata. Stay away from the Yankees. Y'all plan to come over here and get your own little enclave. We don't do anything to you. That's a damn lie. And the only time we check you is when you come in our circles trying to undermine us. Other than that, we don't even look at you like that. We don't care what you're doing. We don't care about your cab jobs and Uber. We don't give a shit. We could care less. The only time we acknowledge you, when you come in our circles, you pop up, one of y'all pop up, we're trying to have a discussion among ourselves and then somebody pops up, hey guys, I just got elected by the white people as the leader of the new reparations task force and um, I'm here to say that we don't need reparations. And then we're like, ho, ho, ho. First of all, nigga, who are you? Where did you come from? Oh, um, um, my family is from Texas. No. Where, where are you from? Why, why? You sound weird, dude. Who, who are you and where are you from? Why is your hairline pushed back so far? Hold on, let's, let me do some research on you. Wait a minute. This nigga, you from, you a tether. Oh, the, the, xenophobic. You, you niggas are xenophobic. White mommy, white daddy, you were right. These niggas hate me. I'm going to have to go to my own community because these niggas are xenophobic towards me. Classic gaslighting, man. We don't give a shit about you unless you come in our circles trying to undermine us, which is what y'all do all the time. Don't sit here and make it seem like we're beating up on y'all and, oh, God, we're just the victims. I'm just trying to earn a living and these niggas are hating to Stop. Y'all come in our circles and do little weird shit to undermine us and then we check you on it and we start looking at people's paperwork and the common denominator we see with a lot of these people trying to undermine us is that you come from somewhere else, just like the damn Somali lady. We don't want that bullshit around us. We don't want people pulling scams and hoaxes and coming around us. Uh, hey, uh, some niggas hit me with a brick. G give me some GoFundMe money. Yeah, we're saying no more of that scamming ass nonsense. We're saying leave your scams and your lies back home. Don't bring that shit among us. Yeah, we saying that. <laughs> White mama. White mama. These niggas told me to take my scams somewhere else. They hate me because I'm successful. I'm the manager at Uber Eats. <laughs> These niggas are hating. The fuck out of here. If y'all don't stop. If you don't stop, man. Oh, oh shout out to my brother Raheem. Yeah, yeah, here's that, that, um, um, Uju Anaya. Yes, shout out to my brother Ra. He sent me a tweet. Yes. Let me show y'all. Wait, wait, where's the tweet? Yeah, yeah. This woman right here. Yeah, because I was looking for the tweets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is some of her tweets right here. Let me put one up. That's her. No shade. However, yeah, that's her. However, Akata need to stop with these assumptions that their blackness is the only one alive in the Americas. So yeah, that old musty-ass woman was sitting up online calling us all types of damn akatas. And then when you get checked, oh, xenophobia, oh, nigga, xenophobia, niggas. Cap, man, all damn cap, dude. You think these folks want to sit up here and play this little game where they secretly undermine and denigrate us and then we don't do nothing, but we feel the effects of it. We're saying enough is enough now. You damn right we're saying enough is enough. 
We don't owe you some kind of racial camaraderie when you don't even see yourself as black. Y'all run around here talking about, oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not black, nigga. I'm Ghanaian. I'm not black, nigga. I'm Ugandan. Y'all be running around saying that. Once we start getting on your bumper about your, your little lies and scams and little denigrating terms that you have about us, then everybody wants to be on some black kumbaya thing. But we don't want you bringing little scams and lies around, among, among us. We're tired of it. Because just like in the Brickgate controversy, all of the negative articles are being directed at us. They're, they're never mentioning the Somalians and some of these Africans. They, they don't mention y'all groups. And you're the ones doing this weirdo ass stuff. They're not saying, hey, Somalians are scamming. This woman who's Somalian has a whole history of scamming and the scams is indicative of what's going on in the Somalian community. It's being thrown on black folks. And, that, and, and notice the article about the woman with the brick. They're shitting on black men and women, okay? You see? We all get thrown under the bus because of what these weird tethers are doing. And we're saying enough is enough. All right, let me see what's going on in this damn article. Let me read some more of it. But this is all cap, man. Pendergrass takes offense to the hostile attitude. Because when she's not working as a private nursing assistant for seniors, she often demonstrates and lobbies public officials for affordable housing and tenants rights in largely low-income black and brown neighborhoods. I'm fighting for all black people. No, you're not. You're fighting for the people in your own community. Stop that. You're not fighting for all black people. Y'all go out there and y'all start trying to get stuff going on for the little Caribbeans in your neighborhood. Stop. Um, she flashes back to an incident that happened on a crowded bus when President Trump was in office. A black man refused to make space for her when she tried to sit down. The two exchanged words. A black woman who was listening chimed in. I guess... She picked up on my accent. The next thing she said was, I can't wait till Trump runs them back home. Let them go back to their country. I said, are you addressing me? And she says, yes, Trump is going to run you out. The irony of the passenger's insults was too rich, given Trump's racism and his record of publicly disrespecting black women. I said to her, you better pray I'm here to defend you when Trump tries to run you to the land of no return. What the hell does that mean? How can somebody who can also trace her ancestry back to the twin horrors of slavery and white supremacy see Pendergrass as an adversary? I'm not here to take anything away from African Americans. I love my African American brothers and sisters. The mandate for the descendants of enslaved Africans, no, no, we're foundational black Americans, we ain't playing that game, to show common cause with each other has been sown into the Jamaican psyche. What? Oh, let me read that again. The mandate for descendants of enslaved Africans to show common cause with each other has been sown into the Jamaican psyche. If you don't get the hell out of here, no, it ain't. What kind of lie is that? Did she really put that lie in there? Man, in Jamaica, well, they had so many color casts in damn Jamaica, it's ridiculous. No, it ain't. That's a damn lie. Hold on, that sounds like it's about to go into the Marcus Garvey. Oh, uh oh, let me read on. Yeah, uh oh, I didn't read the whole article, but I already saw where this was going. Uh oh, I knew where it was going. This is about to go into the Marcus Garvey lie. Uh oh, oh there it is. Now, let me read the rest. Even so, some in Jamaica believe that black Americans have lost touch with this shared heritage as they fought to achieve racial progress. They disown their people, but what a day when I and I people come together to hold each other, reggae legend Bernie Spears says in the greeting, his 1982 song, Plea to Black America, the hell out of here. Walking past stately apartment blocks near the library, Pendergrass points out that a Jamaican, Marcus Garvey, helped foster Pan-Africanism and black pride in the early 20th century 
among migrants in Harlem who escaped the racial violence in the South. Oh, my God. Oh, the... Okay, we've already pointed out we, the, the Marcus Garvey thing. We Jamaicans, we Marcus Garvey, we... Y'all weren't on Marcus Garvey's time. Let's keep it a buck. I didn't said this. I didn't said this a million times. When Marcus Garvey was alive, Jamaicans didn't support Marcus Garvey. Dr. John Henry Clark pointed this out several times. The Pan-African movement got started over here. It got started over here because we were on that vibe of all black people being together. We're fighting together one big common oppressor. The place where it didn't take off was the Caribbean, particularly in Jamaica. The Pan-African movement did not, did not, did not pop off in Jamaica. That's why Garvey had to leave Jamaica. Garvey kept failing in Jamaica because the people there were not trying to be on a Pan-Africanist vibe. They were all about their little color caste systems among themselves. They did not like Garvey. In fact, when Garvey came over here, as John Henry Clark said, it was other Caribbeans who the FBI used to undermine Garvey. They had a whole bunch of double agents among Garvey. Garvey was elevating his Caribbean brethren, and they were the ones who were undermining Garvey. And then when Garvey went back to Jamaica, when he got pushed out of the U.S., he ran for office. Them niggas in Jamaica elected a white man over Garvey. Garvey left Jamaica in disgust. He's like, these niggas are on one. I'm going to Britain. That's why Garvey died in Britain. He was dis disgusted with the coonery that was in damn Jamaica. So don't try to play the Marcus Garvey card on us. Some of us know the damn history. Do not try to play that game. Don't sit up here talking about, we Jamaicans are all about um, African unity. And no, you're not. No, you're not. And, now, and look, we got some cool Jamaican brothers and sisters. Let me be clear. I'm cool with a lot of Jamaican brothers and sisters. Much love. I, when I go, I go to Jamaica all the time. I got some riders over there. I got friends here from Jamaica who are riders. I got some real good riders from Jamaica. But you do have the tether class. You do have the cake soap class. You do have the weirdo class. You, you do. Yeah? Let's be real. But boy, these articles that they're putting out, boy, it's cap. These people, this is propaganda if I've ever seen it, man. This is propaganda. All right, let me see some more of this stuff. Uh, all right, let me read some more of this stuff because I haven't even written, read down this far. We know the whole story that slavery of slavery that everybody's trying to deny. This country's foundation is built on the backs of black Americans and their parents. Um, it happened to us here in this country and the Caribbean and other parts of the world. This should make us come together. Y'all ain't trying to come together. Okay. Uh, now here she goes, she's talking about as a trained pastry chef, she was given a job cooking at the 5 a.m. shift, unloading supplies at Bob Big Boy Restaurant, earning $4 an hour when she was asked for asked to work for the restaurant chain again the following year. So are these the jobs y'all keep talking about that we're mad at? Are these the jobs? This is another thing. Y'all talk about we're mad at y'all getting all these jobs. You work at Bob's Big Boy. Is that what we're supposed to be mad at? Nobody's tripping on that. The, that, that whole thing where, I, I hate this narrative that the tethers, they come and act like they come over here and jump off a boat and just start bawling out. And we're just mad because you bawling so damn hard. No. You come over here, you work at a little restaurant job making $4 an hour, which ain't nothing wrong with that. But don't sit here popping your collar like we're somewhere like, mmm, mmm, little Tim Buck is making all that money. What are you going to do with them $4? Mmm. We ain't tripping. We're not tripping. Nobody cares. The only time we have an issue with you is if you're getting in our mix, trying to undermine us. Yeah, you got 10 jobs that pay $4 an hour and we supposed to be somehow jealous and mad because you work 24 hours a day for minimum wage. We're not tripping on that at all. 
That's a lie you tell yourselves. We're not tripping on that. We, we think about business ownership and shit like that. We ain't tripping on that. We just don't want the tether class coming among us trying to tell us what we ain't supposed to damn get. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Shout out to Nikki the guy. Yeah, there's videos. Yeah, don't tell me about pride. I, look, I don't want to hear about some of this pride that y'all have in your homelands and all that. And there's videos of you guys the minute a boat shows up Grown ass men are elbowing each other to run to a boat to get the hell on. There's several videos in all of these other countries. The minute some ship shows up, niggas are kicking each other and punching each other in the chest, running in mass to hop on a damn boat, leaving all the little women and kids back. They're leaving the women and kids back, and these grown ass military age men are fighting to, to run from their homeland. Let me tell you something. That's an image you never see of foundational black American men. You never, 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 never see groups of foundational black American men running and fleeing from some damn where. You just don't see it. If you see it, show me a video of FBA men, a group of FBA men running from something especially from themselves. You're running from your own failure because that's what you're running from. You don't see us doing that. You want to keep it a buck. You want to talk about people who stand strong. You don't see us whole bunch of niggas all arm in arm. I was going to beat you to the boat. Feats don't fail me now. Back up, nigga. You don't see us doing that. Let's keep it real. Let me see what else is in this article this woman is talking about. But yeah, the propaganda is real. The work was grueling. As Pendergrass recalls, white residents hurling the N-word and throwing bottles at her and her Jamaican co-workers as they walked home. But nothing could dim her enthusiasm to someday build a new life in a land that seemed to overflow with possibilities. She eventually got married and settled in New York. Vaca Jamaica might be a vacation paradise, but if you happen to be from there, it's hard to get ahead. The poverty, the crime, the lagging healthcare services, the indifference of powerful nations that extract nat natural resources while doing little for everyday people. Many factors have spurred her compatriots to flee the island. All right, their words. Uh, da, 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 da. Born in Jamaica's capital of Kingston, she grew up on her mother's side, blah, 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 15 miles from Montego Bay. The area was once a refuge for escaped slaves known as Maroons who fought fiercely against their British captors. Let me stop right there again. All right. Another historical fact. See, they'll, they try to say some stuff and then leave things out. By omission. You say you love the beard? Shout out to the ladies. The ladies say they love my beard. I've been growing my beard out. That's my thing. But let me let me say this. That whole, the Maroons over there were different from the Maroons over here. See, in this article, they say how the Maroons fought fiercely against the British. What you don't say is that the Maroons ended up striking a deal in Jamaica with the British. And part of the deal was that the Maroons would turn in runaway slaves. All right? Let's tell all of it. Part of the deal was that the Jamaican Maroons would turn in certain runaways back to the British. Our Maroons didn't do that. Our Maroons, the Maroons down in Louisiana, down in Alabama, down in Florida, down in the Great Dismal Swamp, of Virginia, North Carolina, they didn't make deals with the white supremacists. So if a brother was a runaway, you were protected by the Maroons for life. The Maroons did not make deals over here. We didn't make deals with these damn white supremacists. That's why some of the Maroon settlements like the Great Dismal Swamp, it was never infiltrated. It was never infiltrated. That was There's two places on the planet Earth in the last 500 years where black people never caught an L. Only two places where black people fought white supremacists and never caught an L, I would say within the last 300 years. Three or 400 years. 
within the last three, 400 years, only two places where black people never caught an L. The black people of North Sentinel Island, when the white people, they show up there, the white supremacists show up there, them black folks give them that work and you can't go up there and do nothing. You can't go up there and do nothing to them because they'll give everybody that work. Great North Sentinel Island and the Great Dismal Swamp of Virginia and North Carolina. Those brothers and sisters in the Great Dismal Swamp never took an L. The, the white supremacists could never go in there into the main area of the Great Dismal Swamp. That was a refuge. That was a refuge area for the runaway slaves and some of the bandits and brothers and sisters getting away from slavery. They never penetrated that place. Never. They never found the settlements in there until like a century or so after the people left. That place never took an L. The brothers and sisters were in the Great Dismal Swamp fighting these white supremacists and protecting each other for centuries. After emancipation, they slowly left and just amalgamated quietly back into society, never took an L. That's why they treat that place like a big ass crime scene today. The Great Dismal Swamp, they treat it like a crime scene. They treat it like a crime scene. They set up Blackwater, the private military agency. It's set up at the Great Dismal Swamp. They send Navy SEALs in there to do training. They're studying how we survived that long and whooped ass that long. They treat that place like, a, there's certain parts they don't even let people go to anymore today. They're still studying how black folks made them people take an L like that. They study that to this day. The only two places where black folks never caught an L after giving the white supremacists that work. Only two places. The Great Dismal Swamp and North Sentinel Island. You then? So our Maroons were way different. We didn't play that game. We didn't make deals with these people. Yeah. That's why they don't talk about the Great Dismal Swamp. They never talk about it. And those brothers, that's who they got to help fight in the Civil War. The North started recruiting the brothers out of the swamp. That's how they were able to win the Civil War. It was them brothers from the swamps that they were using. They were already militarily trained. When they went to the brothers in the swamp, because see, the, the brothers on the plantation, they were reluctant to, to give them weapons first. So they had to say, hey, yeah, we'll give a little freedom to you. But the brothers in the swamp, you couldn't say, hey, we're going to give you freedom. They already had freedom. The brothers in the swamp, they were already free. So what they did, they said, hey, look, now we'll give you some more weapons and you get to kill some of these white supremacists. The brothers in the swamp said, well, shit, say less. Oh, okay. So just business as usual. We've been doing that. Just, you know, All right, let's, let's just get it popping. Let's get it all the way popping. Yeah? But let me read some more of this article. But yeah, the, the, the article is trying to be a little deceptive by omission by talking about the Maroons up there fighting the British. Yeah, they made a deal with the British. Okay, flip-flopping through handed down copies of Ebony and Jet magazine. Hold on one second, hold on one second. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on one second. Uh, hold on one second, guys. Somebody's texting me about something. All right. Okay, Pendergrass feels like there are times where she still feels like an outsider looking in in black America. To compensate, she holds tight to what gives her comfort. The culture of the tropics. If you don't stop. Stop. Nobody's more proud of their culture than people who flee from it. <laughs> I hate when people come over here, you flee, and then try to convince everybody how, oh, your, your, your culture is so great once you flee from it. Stop. I'm not trying to denigrate nobody, but I wish y'all stopped doing that. Oh, our culture is so great. No, if it was so great, you wouldn't have fled from it. Okay. She goes to the farmer's market to buy vegetables and specialties like wild fowl. Um, hold on. texted me. Okay. Um, she helps a friend that sells food at the annual West Indian Day Parade Carnival that has floats and dances throughout Brooklyn. 
They're dancing. She spots a black man doing aerobics to Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Um, they look excited to see other black people in a mostly white neighborhood. I'm from Trinidad. Uh, okay, I don't know what they're saying here. It's not just immigrants in New York and thriving communities from the Caribbean and Africa who celebrates her idea that we're one black people. Black American civil rights entertainers, artists, and educators in the 1960s and 70s saw hope for racial uplift and liberation of nations such as Jamaica, Ghana, Kenya from white colonial rule. Today, more and more descendants of enslaved Africans are using DNA testing to trace their roots to their ancestral homelands. My homeland is here. Damn all that. All right. I'm going to spend trip to New Jersey. Okay, what are they talking about? When told that many African and West Indian immigrants feel alienated from black America, she nods with recognition. For whatever reason, we tend to separate ourselves. That detachment is more difficult to reconcile because many black people from the U.S. also struggle with being the other. No, we're fine. We ain't tripping. We're fine with who we are. Unfortunately, being born in this country, we lose something as far as heritage, connection, and spirituality. No, we don't. Not us. Our heritage and spirituality is fine. She's troubled that the angst sometimes manifests as resentment against foreign-born black people when for her, their ethnic pride is an inspiration. We're not tripping on you. We're not tripping on you. Okay, this is them eating some oxtail and bammy or whatever they're doing. We're not tripping on you. Man. Okay, I'm looking at some more. Uh, okay, enough is... Uh, okay, that's enough. But you get the gist of it. We got we our spiritual we're, our spiritual and ethnic pride is intact. We're not longing for no homeland. We're fine. We're absolutely fine. Our lineage goes deep here. Y'all are the ones who are projecting. You guys are the ones. I, I'm not trying to be mean spirited, but y'all don't be having birth certificates. Y'all don't, you, you cannot trace your lineage like we can trace our lineage. We have a long, consistent lineage on this land. This is why we can trace our custom and cultures back for centuries that we still embark on. Yeah, this is, a, yeah, this delineation is killing them because now we're calling out a lot of their foolery. We built this country from scratch. So we don't have any confusion about who we are. They're trying to project this weird confusion on us. We're not confused. No, nigga, you do a DNA test to see your homeland back in Africa. Look, those DNA test family that go to Ghana, whatever, you see somebody saying, yeah, yeah, my ancestry go to Ghana. Ghana didn't exist back then. Those countries didn't exist. The land maps were redrawn and retraced. So those countries as we know them didn't exist. The cultures of these countries didn't exist. These countries have been remixed so many times over. We're not missing out on anything. Let's get this straight. Because those countries over there now are relatively newly formed countries and they don't have a deep, rich, rich culture. Because they've been remixed, redrawn, redistricted the people have been fleeing back and forth and recolonized so many damn times. There is no long, deep, rich history in many of those countries over there now, family. Let's keep it real. Yeah, Ghana wasn't even where it is presently. It ain't. It's not. So Many of those tribes over there are just tribes by name. You got people who were brought in from East Africa and they were forced to run over there to Central Africa. Then they were forced to run to West Africa. Then they became absorbed in a certain tribal name over there. So they don't have no long, deep, rich history like that. 
if we're going to be real, because they've been colonized and remixed and repeopled and redrawn and recarved up so many damn times. You, you feel me? That's why you go over there and the people over there worship, they still worshiping white Jesus all over the place. Our lineage is longer here because it's been a constant. We haven't, we haven't fled. You dig? We've been dealing with the white supremacists, this U.S. white supremacists. We've been dealing with that person for the last 400, 500 years. And we haven't fled the land. So we have more of a camaraderie and we have deeper seated roots in this land. Our roots are more deep rooted here than white supremacists. Because many of them came over after emancipation. So many of these white supremacists who try to come over here and pull rank on us, these are new booties too. These two are new booties. They can't even pull rank because they came over recently. You dig? So yeah, we, we got to get this stuff straight and start checking people and getting some straightening and letting people know what the deal is. You dig? And speaking of Root, the Root Work deodorant will go back on sale this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. At RootWorkStyle.com, Root Work deodorant will go back on sale this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get out of here because I got a lot of stuff to do, family. But I think we had a great conversation today. Everybody go to, I need everybody to go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Put a little donation at the Hidden History Museum. Um, HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Everybody, what, we got what? 5,000 people here. Everybody can put five, 10 bucks on it today. Who's in here? That would be great. Everybody go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Put a little donation on the page um, to help us out with the institution at the Hidden History Museum. Anyway, y'all, it's been real. Rootworkstyle.com. This weekend, more deodorant will be back on sale. Um, I'm out of here. Puppy